Hey guys, Nathan at Duck River Honey, and today I'm going to run through all of the swarms that I've caught already and got hived here. Um, there's a few reasons for that. We're right at the beginning of our main flow. Tulip poplars in bloom. Crimson clover, as you saw, is in full bloom. Uh, the bees are working like crazy. That means that they're going to be bringing in a lot of nectar over the next couple of weeks. And that means they're going to be building a lot of comb over the next couple of weeks. So I want to take this opportunity to checkerboard in the outer frames, uh, which they typically are slow to draw. Uh, the outermost frames, they, they just don't get out there and draw it very well. So if you move those frames into the interior, then they'll draw the entire box out, and then you've got a, a full box of drawn frames. So I want to get some checkerboarding done. Uh, another thing that I want to do is go through these big ones, uh, the ones that are in threes already, and if they are uh, mostly drawn in the top box, I'm going to add a honey super on top because some of these have got enough bees, I think that they can make some honey, and I want to take advantage of that if at all possible. Uh, you know, honey production is one of my big goals this year, and hive swarming kind of takes away from that. Um, I mentioned this before, but Research has indicated that if you double the population of bees within a hive, then the honey production capability does not go up by two times. It goes up actually by about two and a half times, maybe even more. So in other words, if you've got one hive with 60,000 bees, they will produce more honey than two hives with 30,000 bees. So um, that's why we try to reduce swarming and I really want my hives to be as big as possible, but I have had some massive swarms come out of my hives, and now I think they are big enough that they'll, they might be able to make some honey for me. So I'm gonna to try to capture some of that if I can. Um, so we'll just dive in, get a, a look at the condition, and, and do what makes sense at the time. bees up here. Try to keep this burr comb at a minimum. You crush bees with that when you put the lid back on. Alright, so looks like They've got this frame drawn, and not this one. So I think what we will do here is checkerboard this one. And call that good, but I am going to dive down into the next box and the one under that and check. Now I'm feeling some resistance here, and that means I've got burr comb in between the boxes. And I bet that my experiment with plastic frames is at least partially responsible for that. All right, guys, calm down. I'll show you what I mean here. I wanted to experiment with all plastic frames this year. These are actually small cell foundations. And uh, what I'm finding so far is that the top bars on these frames are not as thick as wooden frames. And in my boxes, which are made for wooden frames, it allows too much space. So the B space is off and the bees are producing a lot of this burr comb. I'm not impressed so far.
Now we'll take a look at the outer frames on these boxes. Of course, that one's a blank. This one is being drawn. Starting on that side, they are working on it on this side. So what I'm going to do is take this next frame, which hopefully does not have brood. It does have a little bit of brood. I don't want to disturb that too much. So I'm going to take this frame. Put the drawn portion to the outside, checkerboard in the undrawn frame, and check over here. So over here is sort of the same deal. We got that one mostly drawn. That does have some brood in it. And some eggs on this. So I, knowing the temperatures for the next couple weeks, are going to be very warm. I'm going to checkerboard that frame in. That will get drawn, and I'll have a finished box there. Same deal. I'm going to pop down to the bottom box. check this outermost frame and it's a blank one end board of it is also a blank wow one end board of it is also a blank okay I need to do some work in this bottom box. These guys have got the bees to handle this. I'm check the boarding two in over here. They obviously started along that frame. They got it about finished. I'd call them done for now. I do not believe that this hive is big enough to put a honey super on right now. They've still got quite a bit of drawing to do in there. So I'll just leave them as they are. Guys, if you watch my videos, then you'll know that this is not the same hive that I had here a couple weeks ago. Um, I actually had a laying worker hive here, and I did an entire video on how I dealt with that, and I was pretty proud of it. I thought it was pretty well done, um, very detailed and i had a corrupted file on my sd card and i lost the entire thing so you're not going to see a laying worker uh, video from me unless i have another laying worker which is not something you hope for so uh, i'm certainly not going to cause that situation on purpose just to shoot a video of it this is actually another uh, swarm that i caught uh, in a swarm trap that these are not my bees. These are somebody else's bees or they're feral bees. So uh, this will be the first time I've peeked into them since they got uh, moved to this location. Good looking swarm there. So 
Same kind of deal. I want to see where they're drawing. Now on these boxes with feeder over here, they typically will draw this frame fairly well. They'll draw this frame really well. Uh, this frame over here next to the feeder very often will be blank on the side towards the feeder. So I'm going to pull that one out and see what it looks like. Well, they are working on that some, and that is all nectar or sugar syrup, either, either way. So what I'm gonna do here, and some people are not fans of this, but this side is a lot better drawn than the other side, so I'm just gonna flip that one. I've got a drawn face toward that feeder, which they are a little bit reluctant to draw. That'll speed them up a lot. This frame is a blank. The next frame they're working on, we'll see what's in it. And they are just drawing that out. And that face is fairly well drawn, so I'm going to put it towards the outside. Put the blank in there. They should draw that out pretty well. Alright, same thing in the bottom. Get some heads down here. I'm betting that this outside frame is blank. It is. And one next to it. They're starting to draw pretty well. They've got nectar in there. Uh, let's see what the next one looks like. nectar frame. That's a nectar frame. That's what I want to look for. There's no eggs in here. Just a nectar frame. So, I'll put this one on the outside. Put the one that they are working on drawing next to that. I'll put the blank inside of there. I'm drastically going to speed them up on drawing that. Force all those over. Looks like they may have this outer frame drawn already. Yeah, they do. Okay. That's all I need to see for them. They're in good shape. They're doing very well. Looks like most of their brood nests, their cluster is here. Um, and then they're working their way over and they've already moved up. You know, just for the sake of time, I think I'm gonna give them a box now. And then they'll be set for a while. frame in here. Eh. I'll just put two empty frames in right there. And even though we're in a flow, I'm gonna give these guys some feed because they've got a lot of wax to make. That's a 
box of bees there. A lot of bees. We've got syrup or nectar there, and they're just barely drawing that. So I'm just going to flip this one. I want to encourage them to draw that side that's undrawn. And this one over here looks like it is a blank. It is. They're working on the one next to it. Checkerboard it in. Here, check real quickly to see if they're clean right. And they are beautiful laying pattern there. Beautiful. You can tell that the the queen started laying here in the center. That's the oldest brood. And then she worked her way out. We've got older age class all the way out and then younger. So it's youngest at the very edge, oldest in the middle. That's exactly what you want to see. Beautiful. Same deal in the bottom box here. I'm going to check them, make sure they are drawing well. And they need a box. There's a lot of bees in this hive. A lot of bees. Looks like they've got at least a couple of blanks here on the outside. They moved up pretty quick. A lot of times they like to do that. Yeah, there's a blank. Starting to draw this one. So they moved up into that top box very quickly. I'm gonna flip that one, put the drawn edge toward the outside. Put a drawn frame next to it. And I'll open it. Check this. I'll go ahead and open this. Push this one over. Put another frame in. These are being a little bit testy for as good as their queen looks. That's one reason I wanted to check them. Got a lot of heads facing me. As well as they're doing, I would expect them to be calm and happy. Drawn there, undrawn there. So I'm going to rotate that, flip it 180 degrees, go back. Now draw that out. Now I would love it if I don't have to come back into this bottom box and do this again. Some hives you don't, some you do. 
See how flighty they are? Got a lot of heads looking at me. I believe I'll give them a box too. They're uh, they're pretty pretty big. Well, there's that saying, make hay while the sun shines. Well, in beekeeping, you make comb while the nectar flows. So if you need it drawn, you better get it drawn while you can. Because unless you're feeding heavily, it's really hard to get comb drawn. And at certain times of year, you just can't get it drawn. frame over to the outside put an undrawn next to it move the rest of these over that way be put an undrawn there get them closed up This next one is a small swarm. I think it was an after swarm with a virgin queen. And I'm kind of excited to get into this to see how much they've grown. They were only about two and a half or three frames of bees. And I don't think it's been long enough for them to have had an emergence yet. To basically have uh, gone through a brood cycle and have more bees in here. I'd have to look at my notes to see. They've got about the same number of bees. They're trying to build up onto the inner cover instead of out. So I think what I'm going to do is to move them. They're all on these three frames. So I'm going to move them out this way and center them better in the hive and then give them some more feed. And I'm not even going to get in and look at the brood on them. Um, you know, anytime you do that, there's a chance you roll the queen and uh, I don't want to disturb them any more than I need to. But what I'm doing here is very gentle. I'm not putting foundation in between drawn frames. I don't think they've got the bees for me to do that yet. All I'm doing is making them cross open foundation to get to the feed. Bees are uh, efficient. And if they can store that food source over here, instead of bringing it all the way over here, they'll try to do that. While I'm here, Try to remove this burr comb because it does cause you to squish bees. I don't like squishing bees. I think in another week or two, this um, this hive will really start taking off. They'll start turning over their population. But you can see how she is, the queen here, it looks great. She's a fantastic looking queen, but she's limited by the bee power that she's got. She's only got two and a half or three frames of bees. That means that she can only lay as much brood as those bees can keep warm. So she can't lay up 10 frames of 
of brood, she doesn't have the bees to maintain that. So uh, these other hives with bigger swarms are going to be triple, quadruple, five times this one's size. Uh, it's going to take this hive most of the summer to catch up. Even with external feeding. Now if you take this uh, if you take external feeding out of the equation, then uh, you know the story really it, they'd have to have a lot of luck to make it through winter. They really would. It'd have to be a very, very good year. If this was a feral colony in a tree, it'd have to be a really good year for them to make it. All right guys, so as you can tell from the newspaper, this is the hive that I put the laying worker hive on top of. And basically I selected them because they were four or five times as strong as this laying worker hive was. I took the laying worker hive 50 yards away, shook out all the bees, put it back on its stand, let most of the field bees return, then brought it over here, put it on top, did a newspaper combine. You always want to put them on top of a stronger hive. That way if there is a fight, you know who's going to win. Stronger hive is going to win. They'll kill that lame worker if, uh, if she happens to be in there. So we'll see what they look like. A lot of bees up here. A lot of work going on. Looks like they are actually drawing this drone comb. I've had trouble getting that drawn. They're drawing this entire box. They're even drawing over to here. All right. That's awesome. They are building some cross column. So I'll pull this drone comb out. They are building some cross comb there, so we'll make them redo that. I'll take this checkerboard it in. Hopefully they'll draw it fast enough that they don't think about cross comb and all that. I'll dive down into the boxes below. Wow! They have completely eradicated that newspaper. This is what a strong hive will do. They completely cleaned up that newspaper. They are actually working on the outer frame there. So I'm just going to flip that one. These guys are just massive. This was a huge swarm. They're going to get supered. And they're big enough. I'm actually going to take their uh, feeder out because I don't know that they're going to need it anymore this year. What I'll do is I'll set that right next to the hive, lay it down. I'll grab two frames and stick in this box. So a couple reasons to remove the feeder. First is I don't think they need it. I'm not gonna feed them, I'm gonna super them. And I didn't do this with the other hive because they were a little smaller than this one. 
and I thought that I might need to feed them some more. Push comes to shove, you know. Um, this hive is big enough, I don't think I have to do that. And if you're gonna super and try to make honey, well, you may as well do it without a feeder in there because as the bees come in and they come up, they have to come over and around that feeder. So you can often get a dead spot in, in honey production above where that feeder is just because not as many bees are going to it. checkerboard in that frame. This frame is drawn. And checkerboard in another one here. Uh, it's very likely there could be brood on some of these frames. I am not worried with this hive about checkerboarding in foundation in the middle of the brood. You know, we're going to be in the 80s and they've got a ton of bees. They've got a lot of bee power in there. Now we'll take a look at the bottom box. They are drawing the outside there. This frame away from the entrance on the far side is usually one that's pretty tough to get drawn. And sure enough, we've got a blank, but the next one there is being drawn on one side. They're festooning there. So they're working at it. I'm going to drop this one in the middle. They can handle it. Super strong bees. We'll give them a super, see if they do anything with it. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button, and while you're at it, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. All of those things encourage YouTube to show my channel and my videos to people interested in beekeeping. My goal with this channel is to encourage people to get into beekeeping and to help them to be successful once they do. So I appreciate you doing those things. It really does help spread the word. Um, I, I appreciate the comments, the encouragement that you guys give me. It means more to me than you, you probably know. Um, I do believe I'm going to cut the video out here. It's just re it's repetitive. I've got two hives to go. It's hot. I'm sweating and talking to camera takes longer than working. So I'm, I'm going to cut it out here. Guys, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.